it's um i guess it, i guess that's the thing too it's like we you probably have thousands of little synchronicities every day right you just don't pay them any mind yeah. you know they're just you're filtering those things out and um and it is curious to think about the big ones right the ones that do cause those shifts it's it's because it is the it's it's that second order cybernetics idea where it's like suddenly you're aware of an awareness of a, of the system right. and and when and when that happens it like it shakes you out of your your perception because i think people forget that that they're observers right i think people they get so used to this idea of i right and it's and it becomes a closed system and they forget that they're observing and and the act of observing creates this this loop outside of themselves um and and an interconnectedness you know that's that's outside of yourself um and i think that's part of it you know i think i think understanding that and seeing that is a is a part of all of this the uh one of the other analogies i've tried to use for for synchronicities is almost like you're playing a, a video game so your higher self is in control and it's saying um like okay i need my character which is us here to do this but you can't directly control it yeah so yeah. You're, you're nudging that character, and it's like, ooh, I'm going to show the character this synchronicity over and over again until it goes where I want it to go. Oh, that's that's great, too. What's well, kind of that that's, um, sounds like the whole concept of the daemon, yes. right? Yes, yeah. And, or the oversoul, or the, you know, the... I always wonder, too, if <laughs> is that the holy guardian angel you right. know, that's talked about in magic? The, that yeah, you're really cool. just talking about that higher self that, that is watching... The video game played out, you know, well, sort of slightly above and behind the the moving character. And and Crowley always said the Holy Guardian Angel is your higher self. I mean, so mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that yep. that yeah. that is the uh, that yeah. I mean, it very well could be. You can't influence it directly, but you can use dreams and synchronicities. And I mean, I can imagine someone making this game. You know. Yeah. 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 You have to guide your character, but you can't directly control them. <laughs> it's almost like the um, the prime directive in yeah. Star Trek, right? But spiritually, where it's like you can see yourself, but you can't influence yourself directly. Right, right. right. It has to be done through um, other means, you know? S subtlety. Subtlety, yeah. And, and there Cosmic subtleties. And sometimes your character, you know, on the easy level, your character pays attention. On the hard level, your your character is a, a diehard materialist and ignores all of it. <laughs> right. Yeah, yes, yes. <laughs> That's great. And you're like, come on, come on, just, oh, God, really? <laughs> you're going to dismiss that too? <laughs> right. It's like, no, 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 go back, go back. <laughs> uh, that's funny, dude. No, I think that's a, that's a really good analogy, uh, for this and you also wonder in terms of um the third man effect right that's often reported oh yeah uh, that's yeah. that somebody's saved uh by this unseen you know this this person comes out of nowhere where they're dying on the side of a mountain yeah. and helps them down and that's like they're 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 only one uh, in the snow they only see their footprints there's not another set of foot, footprints and it's like is that this higher self you know this this dame and this oversoul that's manifesting it's breaking the rules yes and then direct directly intervening and helping you right it, it used a cheat code yeah it has a game genie <laughs> it's going okay he's gonna die and he's not supposed to die yet oh, i'm gonna have to do something yeah yeah I, but you know what it, i know that sounds wild but it's probably it, it. It all probably is something like that, though. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, it's just all we have are analogies to things we know. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. and like the more I look at it, the more I, I always go back to that video game analogy. It really is like a video game. I mean, you and, can you can take it apart, like with reincarnation. You can say, you know, you can say, okay, ever you have all these lives that happen at once. We don't experience it that way because we're in the system. But if you're outside the system, you could be playing multiple characters in a game and just jump back and forth between them 
and those characters don't know you're doing that. They don't know know any. There's been any break in the gameplay. Um, and also there's there's the um, oh, what was the other thing with the video games? I've just lost it. Yay, yay for my brain. Well, obviously, you just made me think of this though that that idea of like while you're while you're in the game, obviously you don't realize that you're playing the game. Yeah. But then when you die, right? Um, and then you have to start a new character for that brief instant while you're selecting your next character to, to play to continue playing the game you're able to re- to remember that you've played six other characters yeah yeah and then when you go back into the game and choose the new character you forget you know that you that you that you're playing a game again um, but it's like those those times in between while you're in the selection process you're able to know oh man I keep dying at the same spot. <laughs> yeah, you know <laughs> the uh, well, and I also the other thing I was going to say is that if you take that game and you look at the the like whatever the code is stored on, everything is there. You know, the entire story is right there in your hand yeah. at one time, but you can't experience it like that. You have to experience it by running through it sequentially. Mm-hmm. Yep. So it's re- like a. So a that, side scroller, you know, and that could be how reality works. We, it's all there, all the possible choices we can make, and all of that, and we're just there to figure out what the best path through is. And mm-hmm. maybe in the end, we're there also to create new paths, get outside the programming. Yeah, what well, you know, the newer games too. They prompt this this uh, idea or this thought of, um, you know, procedurally generated content so it's like that part of the world that you're exploring didn't exist until you explored it oh yeah you know, and then yeah it, you know and, and and your exploring of it dictates what it is yeah yeah um, way, way way back on the uh was it, yeah it had to be the commodore 64 there was a game that was called like seven cities of gold or something like that mm-hmm. where you could you were an explorer going into like the new world and you could either have it be like actual America or you could have the game generate random uh, structure, you know? Mm -hmm. So if you did the random one, you didn't know what was there. And as you got there, it then created that. And now that was, you know, that would be the structure that remained the rest of the game. Ah, that's fascinating. So until you observed it, until you went and explored it, it didn't have a particular structure. And then the game said, okay, this is what's here. That's kind of what how Minecraft is. Is it okay? Yeah. I've never played Minecraft. Yeah, it, it's uh, my my daughter's been uh, getting heavily into Minecraft. She's seven, and and so I've been playing. It. It's been interesting playing that game with her and seeing how large portions of that game are procedurally generated. But it's like once observed, and and the uh, the computer system is forced to generate you know, probably a random uh, sort of landscape. Uh, once it's generated and observed, then it's permanent. And yeah, it's exactly it's exactly that. And you know, I, I don't think that reality necessarily is procedurally generated. It might but be. what do you think? I think very well could be. Yeah, I mean, very well could. Be. That's what I was going to say. Is just that I, I'm not a solipsist in the sense that I think I'm creating other people or anything like that. You oh, know, right, I think right. All, you know, all we're all independent entities, but. Um, but I, but yes, I do think that like, that's what we talked about the last time, you know, there are just too many weird little things where it's like, that is, that seems too perfect that it almost only exists for me. Yes. Right. Yeah. And, and definitely though that those parts of it, it's like, it could be, it's probably procedurally generated, but it involves feedback. Like you have to give information to the system and then the system uses that information to tailor reality yeah. Yeah. a little bit and and i think people who are more in sync with that probably create reality more so than the people who aren't in sync with that yes like there, yeah. there, there, there's yeah. a common reality we certainly all share but we also all have our independent realities because when you think about it every single one of us views reality differently like because we've had different experiences we've experienced different emotions we've every single one of us so none of us see it exactly the same way, and certain things that mean something to one person don't mean a damn thing to another. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Especially in terms of like symbolism and, uh, um, yeah, and art. You know, yeah. Well, I love 
thinking about this and thinking about it in terms of Wikipedia and and this idea that y- you want to believe that Wikipedia is um, created by m- millions of people, mil- the millions of editors, and everyone is helping to find truth, right? right? But they're not, and it turns out that you know eighty percent of the articles are really only edited by 5% of the users. Yeah. You know, there, there are millions of users, but there really are only 5% of all of those, or not millions, but there are probably hundreds of thousands of editors uh, or people that have lo- you know registered to edit. But really only 5% of those people are um, what would be called super users. Yes. Right? Yep. And so those super users in it to absolutely dictate What's real? What's yes. reality? Because when you think about it, the the way that Pittsburgh is spelled, right? There's there's a controversy in, uh, on the article Pittsburgh, really, of whether or not it ends with a G or an H. And if you were to look at it at any point in the day, it may switch because oh. there's a constant uh, wiki war being fought, uh, an edit war, nonstop by various editors who are trying to assert their view of reality. So I may go look at it at 1110 and and it'll say, you know, Pittsburgh with no H. But then if I go back at 230, it could have an H. And what, so what a map say? Th- oh, I'm not sure. And I'm <laughs> sure there's a reason why these guys, even if the maps say that, they're probably citing things from, you know, 200 years ago or whatever. Um but there are, but there's actually a Wikipedia page about the wiki wars of certain articles that constantly <laughs> change moment to moment, and and so, but I think that's an an incredible metaphor for reality because there are probably super users in you know that that are here amongst us, and their opinions on how the world exists or should be perceived affects millions of other people's perceptions of the world. And, um, and that's in, that's not in a paranormal sense, right? That's just in a, in a cultural sense, yes. especially yeah. in, in the age of, of, you know, social media. So, um, so according to ways, it's spelled with an H at the end. Okay. Yeah. So, but apparently it switches back and forth. There's uh, that I'll, I'm going to send you a link when we get off here for that page, but, but or that article about those various uh, sub pages of, uh, of of Wikipedia, because just to think about this, I'm like just throughout the day that that entry is slightly changing, right? It's in flux, and so like whenever you you know we we agree upon almost everything, right, about a subject, but there's still these tiny little fluctuations. That are constantly happening, these little tiny edits. And that, I think that is what is happening with reality, too, you know? Yeah. The, um, of course, the other problem with Wikipedia is they seem to have an agenda. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Definitely. Definitely. Um, what was I? I was looking at the, the, I was doing some research on uh, Mormons, and I didn't realize that certain subjects in Wikipedia actually have a designation at the top and it tells you that you're reading about Mormonism, which may be an invented thing. So it's, it's like if you're reading it and you're Mormon, what you're reading is considered true. But if you're not a Mormon, this may just all be made up. Right. But I hadn't come across a Wikipedia page that at the top basically said, you know, if you subscribe to this, it may be true. If you don't subscribe to this, this may be fantasy. And I thought, man, what's what does that say about the nature of knowledge? Well, also they 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 take a very uh, low view of the paranormal. Yes. <laughs> and it's not necessarily an honest view. Like the Pittsburgh thing could easily say some people think it's spelled with an H. Some people say it's spelled with a G, and it's not settled. That could be, you know. Yeah, yeah. But they have to but go in there and be that. right, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's crazy. <laughs> I did not know about that. Yeah, I wish I could think of the other. There, there were like thirty or forty, you know, entry, sub entries on Wikipedia that all had these um, 
crazy, crazy wiki wars going on. And and there were like hundreds of people constantly involved in um, changing, you know, what, 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 how the article read. 